also shout out to my nails they match this cover like that's probably gonna be another instagram challenge i feel like nails that match book covers so maybe i'm the first one to do it who knows mm. and probably not there's nothing original about Hola y'all, welcome back to my channel. You are watching Shelly Flowers Reads and Writes where I talk about all things related to reading and writing. I am Michelle Flores and today I am going to be doing my week one wrap up of the Sealy Challenge. So as you guys might know, I created a bingo board for myself where I basically made different challenges of different kinds of books I could read to help me along this Sealy Challenge. This first week I read in total six books. The first book that I read is Supernatural Love by Gertrude Schneckenberg. I have mixed feelings about this book. This book fulfilled the challenge of read a book of poetry by a Leo or a Virgo. Gertrude Schneckenberg was born in August so that definitely fulfills that challenge. However, I am not loving this book. Like, part of the issue for me is that a lot of the references are based in a lot of Greek and Roman mythology and they tend to be very metaphysical so I am having a hard time understanding some of the poems because I can't necessarily access the background information that she's pulling from. I also don't know that I necessarily like her writing style. It's very formal but considering that she was writing in the 80s it's it's kind of surprising to me because it feels a lot older than that. So I'm about halfway done. This book collection in particular is three books in one. So I've read two of the books in here. I'll definitely finish it, but I don't know if this is a book that I'm gonna keep anymore. This is a reread from grad school. So I'm trying to pare down my collection from there. So if I don't like it, this will definitely be a book that I unhaul. Next up, we have Speak Low by Carl Phillips. So this book fulfilled the challenge of reading a book from someone in the LGBTQ community. This was his actually his 10th book that was published, which is crazy to think about. I want to be at that point in my career where I can publish 10 books. I rated this book three stars because similarly to Gertrude Schneckenberg, I don't necessarily understand a lot of the references that Carl Phillips makes. And it's interesting because in both of these books, there's this pull from a very western classical tradition that i think a lot of poets modern poets specifically might not necessarily have access to and then therefore cannot necessarily identify with but a lot of people also call out modern poets for making these very pop culture timely kind of references and <laughs> I just think it's interesting these two ideas that are in contrast with each other these ideas of making references that are very much stuck in a specific time period that can both enhance a poem during that time period but once you leave that time period and you go in the future does it still hold its validity i don't really know the answer to that i'm someone who makes timely references all the time in their work but i'm also someone who's working towards not on purpose i've just seen my work take this path i'm working towards a more pastoral view of my poetry particularly because i don't see a lot of pastoral poetry about florida so that is something that i'm actively trying to um incorporate in my work so anyway i liked it there were a lot of poems i actually really liked about in here but there were a lot of poems i also could not access so that's why i'm rating it three stars Next up is to read an award-winning book of poetry and for that I picked The Last Mastodon by Christina Olson. I rated this book five stars. This is a chat book and I, I, I just love this book so much. It is so good and every single poem is so clearly purposeful i love this concept of a poet who is also a paleontologist i made an instagram post about this but i i firmly do believe that in both poetry and in politics we need more scientists science is so poetic and so profound and so awe inspiring and that's what poetry does too so i i want to see more books like this where we have scientists writing poems about the science that they're doing and she also incorporates a lot of historical elements to it as well there's a lot of conversation about thomas jefferson in here and sally hemmings and paleontology and all of these things are connected if you understand the history behind them so i 
love this book i highly recommend that you guys get it as well let me know what you think about it i rated it five stars next up is spider lightning by ben atkinson i don't think i had this book on my list of books to read originally so i can't remember why i picked this book but for the purposes of this video i'm gonna say that this book fulfills the challenge of reading a book of poetry by a north american author because ben atkinson is local to florida now I did not rate this book because it's not on Goodreads. This is an independently published book. So I also don't really want to rate it if it's not listed on Goodreads. I really enjoyed this book. I think this is another great example of a scientist who writes poetry because Ben Atkinson is an ecologist and he studies the local Florida life kind of related to what I was just talking about for the last book. So if you want to support local poets to Florida, highly recommend you get this book. Um, I really appreciated its perspective on the way that it talks about politics and coming from a military family and maybe a more conservative family, but recognizing that you yourself might have a different perspective on the world because I am definitely in that situation as well. I come from a very conservative family and I have been working against some of those ideals that I was brought up with. So this book is really interesting in that. I also really loved one of the poems in here. It's called Water Birth Rights, and it's basically about the birth of Ben's child. I don't think I've ever really read a poem about birth from the perspective of the father that did not feel othering. It definitely felt like a communal experience like I could picture myself there in the room as these people were welcoming their child into the world and I think that's something that I would like to read more of I I am obviously someone who's very interested in this concept of motherhood but I'm also very interested in this concept of fatherhood and then I think in a time where we very stubbornly want to attribute parenting as a very feminine act I think it's really powerful to read about parenting from the perspective of a more masculine person. So I think this book alone is worth it just for that poem. I think it's a really powerful poem and I think it's a perspective that I would love to hear more about. The next book that I read was Thirst by Mary Oliver and this was to read a book of poetry by someone who has passed away. Mary Oliver passed away last year. She is one of my favorite poets but this is actually the only book of hers that I own. I think I rated this book four stars and I need to get more of her books. I just I love her poetry and the interesting thing with this book is I remember it being very pastoral but I did not remember the level of conversation around religion that's present in this book so I really appreciate this book for that. I find it to be so fascinating how she connects religion and the natural world and a lot of the questions that she has about religion are questions I've had myself. So I definitely loved this book. Now, I will say there were some lines in here where I was a little bit like, ooh, that, that does not hold up over the years. Like, she in one poem called Logan International, she describes people as beautifully Hispanic. I don't really know what that means, but there's so many other good poems in here like the fist where the last lines of that poem say keep looking behold how the fist opens with invitation and I think that is such a beautiful image loved this I think I rated it four stars it's it's so good the next book is the book of light by Lucille Cl Clifton I rated this book four stars as well I called this challenge originally read a book of poetry by someone who writes mostly in prose. I've kind of changed that a little bit because I realized how hard that challenge really is. So instead, I have now called it read a book of poetry by someone who writes in genres other than poetry, which Lucille Clifton does. I loved this book as well. I think I also rated it four stars. There are so many classic lines in this book, and I am just... I'm looking for a particular poem because this is a quote that I have seen going around quite a bit, but I don't think people actually know where it comes from. So here's the poem that I'm talking about. This is the poem called Song at Midnight, and it's truly, 
I think one of her masterpieces and this is the, this is the last line of the poem really the last few lines come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed this is a quote that I see passed around all the time on Instagram and Twitter and if you have been curious about the book that this comes from it's this book right here the book of light and it comes from this poem song at midnight so the only reason i'm giving this book four stars rather than five is because i do think similarly to jetrude schnackenberg and to carl phillips there were some references that were made in here that i just didn't understand i do also wonder though if that is because i am not a black person and so there are some references in here that are just not for me so that is the danger i think of rating books sometimes and um there's a lot of conversations going around about that and the benefits of rating and not rating books so take my rating with a grain of salt because I recognize a lot of these poems in here are not meant for me or people like me but this is a book that I truly do admire and on a craft level I think it's just really fascinating to read from that is it for me today i'm going to be doing this series every week this month so rather than doing a complete monthly wrap up i am just going to have these books the books that i read for every week during the sealy challenge i'll talk about them and uh yeah if you're interested keep watching i do also want to mention that i started reading this book this week this is the elixir vitae adventures ortis by stacy horan I am unhauling this book because I don't like it. I was very bored by it and I like the concept of it because it's a middle grade adventure book that takes place in Florida and it references a lot of Florida things but I have issues with the representation. Like there's one part where they meet a Hispanic woman in Miami and it's just like a caricature of a Hispanic woman. There's another part where they go to the Miccosukee Reservation, which is a place you can actually go to here in Florida and you can go visit the Miccosukee tribe of Indians and, you know, learn about their culture. But the way that the character is presented, I, it's one of those things that's hard because like I'm not Native American, so I can't speak to the rep in that way, but it feels very othering and very caricaturish to me. And it's just not something that I'm interested in further reading. I also don't know that I care about this story. Like I think I would have liked it if it was just a regular adventure, but they made it into this kind of magical realism thing and the rules don't really make sense to me. So I don't know. I am finding this issue with self-published books and I don't know if it's because I'm just reading the wrong ones or what, but it seems like the things that I like reading about books, a lot of the self-published books that I have access to aren't able to accomplish. So if you have recommendations for really good self-published books that you like, please let me know as well. I, I want to like self-published books. Self-publishing is something that I'm interested in doing, but I also like really good quality books. That's not to say that traditional publishing doesn't have its issues because there's plenty of trash books with traditionally published books, but um, I just tend to like traditionally published books more. And I don't know if it's, again, because I haven't been exposed to the right kinds of self-published books or if it's just the level of editing and processing that those books have to go through in order to be published. So. Anyway, I'm probably gonna get a lot of shit for that statement. Who knows if this will stay in the video. I am also still giving away these books. So if you are interested in The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one, in The Nervous Filaments by David Don Lee, in Did You Know by Elizabeth S. Wolf, which is a chat book. So this will be really easy to get through. Or if you're interested in Recyclopedia, Trimming, Supermarket, and Muse and Drudge by Harriet Mullen. You are more than welcome to DM me on Instagram if you're interested in any of these books and I will happily mail them to you. I do not want them anymore, so let me know. I would love to send some free books to people, especially because I know books are really expensive and doing a challenge like the Sealy Challenge can be a lot because uh, it, books of poetry especially are kind of expensive when you think about the number of pages that are in them so just let me know i'll mail these off to you at no cost to you if you like what you hear go ahead and hit like and subscribe i post videos every wednesday and sunday sometimes friday you can find me on all social media platforms as at shelly flowers i also have a couple books for sale so if you want to purchase them the links are down below 
All right. Ciao, y'all.